Hopefully the slides will hold together enough for me to actually give this talk. Um, thank you for the introduction. As it was said, I'm Ariel Hamlin, uh, and today I will be presenting our work on private anonymous data access. This is a joint work with Raphael Strofsky, Moore Weiss, and Daniel Wicks. Um, so without further ado, let's consider a setting where we have a server, a single server storing some database, in this case, a medical database. And we have a set of clients who want to make queries into this database to get information about flu symptoms, especially given the flu symptom we've had, or flu season we've had here in the States. Um, you might have someone who is concerned about their headache or headache causes. Um, but for other clients, um, they may be concerned about sort of their queries and their identities being linked to those queries. So in this setting, they want maybe both privacy for those queries and anonymity for their identity. So this is the setting that we consider within Panda. Essentially, a single server um, with multiple clients, and we want to be able to provide privacy and anonymity for the clients asking queries. Um, so, as with all works, um, we have an acronym, um, namely Private Anonymous Data Access, or as we like to call it, PANDA, because who doesn't like cute, adorable, fuzzy creatures? Um, so for the rest of the talk, I'll be referring to our system as PANDA. So without further ado, what does Panda actually consist of? Um, we have a setup pr uh, protocol that takes in a database um, and generates for each of our clients essentially a unique client key and gives the server an encoded database. So in this case, both the client and the server is, are stateful. We also support writing, or sorry, reading. Uh, so a client may have a value that they want to read within the particular database. Using their client key, they interact with the server and get the value back at that particular database uh, location. We also do support writes in Panda, but in this talk, I will be talking primarily about our read-only Panda scheme. Um, if you're interested in rights, um, we do present the sort of high-level work, but I would encourage you to refer to the paper or track me down after this session. So now that we sort of established the syntax, let's talk about what we want sort of in this setting, in this definition. As I mentioned in our motivating example, we want security against a server who may be trying to learn um, clients' queries and their identities. Namely, we want privacy of access patterns against the server, and we want anonymity of the client's identities, meaning the server cannot cross-correlate uh, client's identities between different queries. Um, we want this not only against a server who might be observing these actions and interactions with the client, but also with a server who is allowed to collude with some number of clients um, and gain access to both their sort of actions and their secret key. And we set at setup time an a priori bound on the number of clients that the server may collude with, and we call this number T as our collusion bound. We also want a single server uh, scheme, so not necessarily something that relies on multiple servers, um, especially not servers that don't collude. And finally, we want efficiency goals. Namely, we want the client and server read or write, if we're talking about it, complexity to be sublinear in this collusion threshold T, or sorry, in the number of clients, N, and the database size. Um, and we want it to be linear in the collusion threshold. So it's this combination of privacy and anonymity for, with bounded collusion um, and these certain efficiency goals that we call the Panda setting. Um, so without further ado, this may sound fairly similar to some of the primitives that have come before me in this session, namely Oblivious RAM and another a uh, primitive called private information retrieval. So I want to spend the next part of the talk sort of comparing and contrasting the Panda setting um, and whether ORAM and PEER are things that actually work to solve our problem. Spoilers, they don't. Um, so 
I think uh, previous talk did an excellent job motivating and explaining ORAM. Um, so at a high level, we have our single server. Um, we have a single client um, who wants to make access or queries into a database that the server is storing while hiding their access patterns. Um, ORAM itself, um, there's a huge asterisk on this no up here, but is not inherently multi-client. There are schemes that attempt to support it, but most of the common schemes do not. Um, runtime is going to be polylog in the database size, and we have set up assumed and the server has state. Um, and we're able to build ORAM essentially from one-way functions. We also have a primitive called private information retrieval. We're talking here about the single server peer constructions. Um, and in this, again, we have a single server and multiple clients who want to be able to make uh, queries and hide their sort of access patterns. Um, unlike ORAM, peer is inherently multi-client. Namely, the client does not need a secret key to make a query. Um, so anyone can come along and, and sort of query and is not needed to be defined at setup time. Unfortunately, this requires linear server-side work for any read accesses. Um, and we're able to get peer from public key crypto. So how we compare with Panda, particularly ORAM, we are able to get multi-client. Um, and unlike Peer, we're able to achieve polylog performance um, in terms of our database size. Um, we do allow for setup and sort of state, and we're able to construct Panda schemes from FHE. Um, so these are common primitives that you might compare Panda against, but there's actually a third one that I want to talk about a little bit, and that's doubly efficient Peer, or dPeer. This was first introduced um, by the Mal et al. in 2000 as a multi-server scheme. Um, and basically what it does is dPeer allows for pre-processing, unlike typical peer. And what you get as a trade-off there is that you can now achieve a polylog runtime for server access complexity during reads. Um, and essentially, what I want to compare against is the more recent work by Kennedy et al. and Boyle et al. in 2017 that reduces the multi-server dPeer down to a single server, and namely their public key dPeer variant. Um, as with Peer, we have a single server, and um, sort of any person can come along and make queries against this sort of database the server is storing. Um, we are, as I said, able to get multi-client, um, polylog runtime. Um, we allow for setup and state, or peer with pre-processing, as it's also called. However, in order to achieve this, we require, or it requires, new coding assumptions and virtual black box obfuscation. So public key dPeer does, in fact, solve our Panda problem, but um, it does so with some fairly heavy assumptions or you know, heavy-duty tools. And we were wondering, is it possible to get a construction that relies on sort of less onerous assumptions? Um, and yes, because my talk isn't ending and I have 14 more minutes to talk at you guys. So without further ado, I want to go into our results. Um, so we're able to achieve a read-only Panda scheme um, relying only on FHE with T, our collusion bound, poly log L, our database size, client read complexity. We also support two variants of Panda that supports writes. We have a public writes Panda, where we essentially have a public database that everyone writes to. And we have a secret writes Panda, where everyone essentially has their own personal database. Um, I want to spend most of the rest of the talk talking about how we construct our read-only Panda scheme. So without further ado, um, our main starting idea here is the original multi-server DPR scheme introduced by Bimel. Um, and in this scheme, we have multiple servers. And in fact, we have K servers, um, and sort of they're all involved. Um, and for setup, we have essentially trusted setup that takes in a database and outputs an encoded database. Um, and it gives, essentially, this encoded database to each of the K servers. It is the same copy. There is no difference between the databases that each of these servers get. When someone wants to come along and make a query, what they do is essentially uh, send out K unique indices into this encoded database for code word symbols that they want to read. 
The servers then go ahead and return the code word symbols at that particular location, and the client is able to decode them and get the message symbol that it wanted to read at that particular address in the database. Um, we say for correctness that the client must issue these K queries to the server. Um, and we say that privacy holds in essentially multi-server DPR if less than S of the, server, S of the servers collude. Um, and in that case, when they have less than S indices that they're comparing, these indices appear to be uniformly distributed. So that's what, when I say multi-server DPR privacy, further in the talk, is what I'm alluding to. So obviously, um, if you'll remember, we had a sort of a list of requirements that we wanted for, for Panda, one of them which is we wanted to use only a single server. So how do we move essentially a single server scheme or a multi-server scheme to a single server? And we do this by essentially having one server emulate all of our K servers as virtual machines or virtual servers. Now, um, we're down to a single server, but obviously in this case, privacy is not preserved. As the single machine is emulating all of these virtual servers, it gets to see the access patterns into these encoded database. Um, so when we're considering access patterns and the sort of wanting to hide them, the primitive that jumps to mind that we want to use is, might be something like oblivious RAM or ORAM. And so what if we did, instead of essentially encoding um, the same copy and sort of handing this out to all of our virtual servers, before we did that, we essentially put these encoded databases into K unique ORAMs. Um, and each of these ORAMs now would have their own secret key. The question is now, how do we query these ORAMs when a client wants to come along and make their sort of K accesses to these virtual servers? Um, so we now have to give each of the clients essentially all of the ORAM secret keys. Um, so this would seem to work, except if we remember that Panda allows for collusion between clients and servers. So as soon as this collusion happens, the server gets access to the client's secret keys, which is all of them, and any notion of privacy provided by this ORAM is now lost. So why even put it in an ORAM in the first place? So we need to now essentially have that each client has some unique, unique secret state um, that is not shared with all of the other clients. So when collusion happens, we still have some notion of secrecy. Um, so <coughs> what we do here is to introduce the idea of committees. Um, so what instead of getting all of the secret keys for the uh, sort of ORAMs, instead clients get the keys for virtual servers on their assigned committee. Um, and this is done at setup, and they essentially get assigned some subset of the servers, um, K of them essentially, that they can now make their queries to. So in this case, in this example, client one gets access to the first and Kth virtual server. Um, Client number two is going to be given access to uh, the first and the second virtual server, so on and so forth. As you'll note, um, we actually have to use more than K virtual servers in this case because we do want um, some additional servers so we don't have um, sort of entire overlap on all of our virtual committees because we want those committees to be unique for each client. So, what happens now when collusion happens? Um, the server only gets the keys for the committee of the colluding clients, which means that it only gets to see some accesses in plain text, only for those um, where there is an overlap between your committee and a colluding client's committee. So essentially, we can say that the server, because the overlap between your committee and the colluding client committees is going to be less than S, uh, based on how these committees are generated, we can say that the multi-server deep peer privacy still holds because the server only sees less than S accesses essentially in the plain text. The rest of the access patterns are now going to be hidden by ORAM. So privacy holds. Um, so we have single server, we have privacy, but if we remember in Panda, we also want anonymity for clients, but now, Clients essentially have some unique information. Namely, they have a unique committee as associated with them. So servers can tell uh, sort of clients 
apart based on which virtual servers they access as they have been assigned to their committee. So we lose anonymity. So how can we fix this? One could say, well, when we query the things on our committee, we can simulate sort of random accesses into the ORAMs that are not on our committee, and the server, <coughs> excuse me, won't be able to tell the difference. However, this comes down to the fundamental problem. We don't actually know how to simulate these accesses into the ORAM, because you remember, we don't actually have the secret keys for those ORAMs. And what's even worse, our adversary, the server, might even, in fact, have the secret keys if it's colluding with a client that has that server on its committee. <clears throat> so essentially, what we need is this ability to make smart dummy accesses, the ability to simulate a random access without the secret key. Um, and this seems a property that most ORAMs, outside of trivial ones, don't necessarily have. So instead, what we do is we try and get the next best thing. We get ORAM-like behavior up to a certain number of queries. And what we do um, to achieve this is introduce the idea of, instead of dropping our encoded database into an ORAM, we instead simply permute it um, based on a pseudo-random permutation, um, essentially. So instead of each encoded database in these virtual servers being dropped in an ORAM, instead it is uniquely permuted as defined by a permutation key, and these keys are given to the clients in lieu of the ORAM keys. Um, so when we want to make a query, uh, a client simply gets the index that it wants to query sort of in the unpermuted database. It permutes it according to its permutation key and asks those queries to things, uh, to the virtual servers on its committee. For things that are not on its committee, it simply asks for a random index in the encoded database because now it can simulate a totally random access and the server, even if it has the key, can't tell the difference between that or sort of an actual legitimate access. Um, so for things that are not on my committee, I have sort of uniform queries by definition. I'm just asking things randomly. For things that are on my committee, but the server doesn't have uh, sort of access to it, um, we say that for a certain number of bounded number of queries, excuse me, that essentially it achieves an ORAM-like hiding of access patterns thanks to a lemma from Kennedy et al.'s uh, 2017 paper. And for things that are on my committee and that the server does have uh, the key for, it is going to appear to be random based on the multi-server DPR privacy. So we're kind of covered in all three of our cases. So we're able to achieve essentially up to a certain number of queries. And how do we move beyond this bound? And this is where our reliance on FHE comes in. Essentially, for every B reads, where B is our bound, um, the server is capable of regenerating the permutations on its own because instead of having them sort of specified by a sort of a pseudo-random permutation, we have them defi defined by a PRF. And this PRF key is essentially encrypted under FHE, FHE allowing the server to essentially evaluate <coughs> the permutation on its own um, and refresh it. Um, for worst case efficiency, I think that it's telling me that y'all are hungry for lunch and that I should hurry up. Um, but we can say that for efficiency, we can amortize this action across our bounds or our, essentially our epoch in order to obtain sort of reasonable worst case efficiency. So this is how we achieve unbounded read-only Panda. Um, we also have, as I alluded to previously, a panda that supports rights, namely uh, a public rights panda with uh, a public database where essentially rights are public, so both their content and where you're writing it to, but the identity of the writer is still hidden, so we still have anonymity. Um, reads, of course, are still private and anonymous. We also have a construction for secret rights panda where essentially each client has their own 
database that they can write to, and in that database, privacy and anonymity of rights is maintained. Obviously, reads are also still private and anonymous. The cost of this, however, is that performance, where we have database size, namely L, now scales with the total number of writes across the entire system. I, that's not the end of my talk. <laughs> uh, hello. It really doesn't want me to show you guys performance numbers. Um, I'm almost at the end, so I can finish up if we have to without. Um, I don't necessarily. Uh, this one? Try this one. <laughs> Here. Enjoy beautiful seals. This was taken at crypto uh, on, in Bur uh, Santa Barbara. So. Um, uh, anyhow, I'll, while they're fighting with that, I'll simply sort of finish off. Um, so we're able to achieve public rights panda with the same read complexity um, and secret rights panda with the same read complexity as read-only panda. Um, all you have to do is hit, I think, just start, and it should, it should oh. work. Yeah. Oh, nope. <laughs> all right. This is going to be actually my second to last slide. So if you guys will bear with me. Um, so client write complexity is simply going to be um, O of log uh, L, where L is database size. For client write complexity, secret writes panda achieves the same sort of uh, complexity as reads. And server write complexity has a reliance on both the uh, number of colluding clients and our database size. And here, epsilon is for any epsilon greater than zero. So that's what we achieve for Panda with writes. In summary, we're able to achieve a read-only Panda scheme um, from FHE, where clients and server uh, complexity is polylog in database size and linear in the collusion bounds. We support two forms of writes, secret and public. Um, and we are interested in pursuing the Panda problem sort of in other directions. Namely, it would be interesting to see if we can remove this bounded collusion aspect of Panda um, and have performance scale independent of uh, sort of the number of co uh, collusions or corruptions and to remove this reliance on FHE um, in favor of more efficient primitives. So, Thank you for sitting through this before lunch with all the technical difficulties. And at this point, I am happy to take any questions. Thank you very much. Any questions about Panda? Yes, they're adorable. 